Today's episode is made possible by my friends at Perfect Keto who make exogenous ketones the totally rock. And I get a lot of questions about exogenous ketones, including what's the deal with all the options? How do I choose an option that works best for me? So here are a couple of tips. Quality is all about ingredients. So you want to look for an exogenous ketone that has as much BHB as possible. That's the active ingredient that we want. And a lot of brands don't even list how much BHB is in their product or they add a ton of caffeine. So people feel super high on their product and think it's the BHB when it's really not. It's the caffeine. Another thing to look at is the sweetener use. Now, exogenous ketones don't have the best taste, which is why in a previous episode, I recommended that you add it to coffee or full fat coconut milk and try to mask that taste. But what a lot of brands will do is mask it with sucralose. And you typically want to steer clear of sucralose because that'll spike your blood sugar and cause you to get out of ketosis, which is totally not going to work for you. And another thing to look for is the binding agent that they use. A lot of brands will use corn and other pretty scary things that you might react to. So if you're wanting to give exogenous ketones a try and you want to give Perfect Keto Base exogenous ketones a try, you can head on over to perfectketo.com slash KDP15 for $15 off. That's 25.5% discount using the coupon code KDP15. One five at checkout from September 2nd to 30th, 2018. Now, if you're listening to this episode after these dates, you can still use the coupon code HEALTHFUL, all in caps, for 15% off. Hey, happy Sunday. Thanks for joining me for episode number 104 of the Keto Diet Podcast. Today, we're chatting about PCOS improvements, weight and your blood sugar, seeing flaws in all humans in order to love your body, non-scale victories, and so much more. Today's podcast extra, a little guide that I've put together for you, is available at healthfulpursuit.com slash podcast slash e one zero four. One cool thing for y'all before we get started, I've put together a free guide on giving you eight steps if you're struggling to lose weight on your ketogenic diet. We go through how hormones play a role in your weight and how to balance them out, the role that stress has on your ability to become properly fat adapted, how to know if you're eating enough versus too much in order to spark weight loss, and so much more. Okay, let's do this thing. Welcome to the Keto Diet Podcast, the show all about keto for women, so you can burn fat, balance your hormones, heal your body, quickly adapt to a ketogenic diet, avoid common struggles, and get the results you crave. And now, here's your host. You might know her as the Keto Queen. She's the international best-selling author of The Keto Diet, founder of Happy Keto Body, and she loves dipping pork rinds in avocado oil mayo, Leanne Vogel. Today's guest is Phoebe, who started her fitness journey with the goal of losing weight to keep from developing full-blown diabetes after being diagnosed pre-diabetic in 2011. After losing weight and still not feeling better health-wise, her journey slowly changed from weight loss to treating her PCOS naturally by healing her body. Phoebe started following a ketogenic diet in 2017 and credits keto as the key to balancing her hormones better than any medication ever could. Phoebe documents her fitness and health journey on Instagram. Her handle is breaking up with obesity. And you'll notice that today's episode is called breaking up with obesity because when you hear Phoebe talk about why she named her Instagram this and the story behind it, I can so relate to this feeling. And I just, I love it so much. Now, if you are curious about how hormones play a role in your metabolism and your blood sugar, and you're trying to get a handle on these things, and you already have my program, The Keto Beginning, you can head on over to pages 22 through 24 in The Keto Beginning. And if you're looking to heal your body on keto with many of the protocols that I mentioned a little bit in this episode, and you have fat fueled, it's focused solely on healing. So open that bad boy up and let's get to work. Okay, let's cut over to this interview. Hey, Phoebe, how's it going? It is great. It's almost Friday and I get paid. So. Oh my gosh, tomorrow is Friday. Yes. I thought today was Friday. I could have sworn I got to work. I checked my account and I was like, what do I want? I didn't get paid. <laughs> it's oh. not Friday. So. 
Yeah. That is the worst feeling ever. <laughs> <laughs> like, I had shoes in my shopping cart that was ready to press, like, buy. Then I checked, and I was like, oh, you can't buy it till tomorrow. It's a good thing you checked. Yeah. Or else my account would have been, like, on E. You know, like, bad. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for coming on. And we're going to be chatting about a whole bunch of things. But before we get to that, I like to ask every guest that comes on the show, what does keto mean to you? Keto is a cure for my PCOS. That's literally what it's done for me. It's not figuratively a cure, but it's really done more for my PCOS than doctors have since I got diagnosed at 14. In the one year that I've done keto, my body has done amazing things. Like it's reversed things that medicine couldn't do because I was on three different medications when I first like was trying to like cure my PCOS. They said none of that works. Like keto literally, it, it, in three months, my body was like doing things that it normally did not do. So keto for me has been a way to treat my PCOS and it's going to be that way until I feel like I'm ready to slowly get off keto and maybe go towards low carbs. That's awesome. And so what sort of changes um, have you noticed specifically with PCOS that's improved? The number one has to be my skin. With PCOS, we suffer from something called acantosis nigricans and nothing really worked. Like I had a dermatologist who gave me a cream and it bleached my skin. But with PCOS, I'm able to leave my house without makeup on and my skin still looks flawless. So that's the number, like, it's not the number one, but it's the biggest thing for me because as women, we want to feel comfortable in our own skin. Um, I remember in, like, ninth grade, I was wearing my mother's foundation to cover up how dark my neck was. Mind you, my mom is light-skinned. I am not light-skinned. I am chocolate. <laughs> so you can only imagine how my skin looked wearing her foundation. I was just so ashamed of what my skin looked like due to my PCOS being so harsh. Like, the symptoms were horrible. Um, as soon as I started keto, the extra fat, it's like they just, I don't know, it's like it's just cleared everything up. My skin looks so much better. It feels better. I haven't done anything crazy. I follow the simplest skin routine. Everything else is just thanks to keto. That's amazing. What else are you just like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. My hair, okay, I'm natural and my hair, because of PCOS again, I used to, I suffered from like little bald patches. My hair grew slow. My hair is like growing at a rate that I just don't understand. And now I'm just like, okay, I think I need to go get a trim because I don't care for long hair too much, but I don't want my hair to be short. So I'm just like, wow, this is great. This is too much. It's like growing way too fast for me. So other than my actual hair, the facial hair that I used to suffer from, it's also slowed down. Like I used to use meat on my face almost every week, sometimes every three days. Nowadays I can go maybe three weeks and not have to like, clear off my lady mustache or whatever and I honestly think it's because my hormones are kind of balanced now um, and again that's because of PCOS because I don't take any medication I haven't taken medicine in the past maybe four years so I know for a fact it's keto that's doing all these things for me because to be quite honest it's not weightlifting I've been doing it for years um, but all these changes did not happen until I really took on keto and I think that's it and you had gone through a pretty big weight loss journey because um, you were pre-diabetic. Can you tell me a little bit about that and kind of how you lost weight and what that feeling was like when you got to your goal weight and you weren't totally happy yet? Yeah. Um, I was 19 years old. I went to my endocrinologist and she did all sorts of blood work because she was like, we know you have PCOS. Now, how do we treat it? Um, the blood work came back and she sat me down and she said, well, I have something to tell you. You are borderline diabetic. If you are to gain five to 10 more pounds, I honestly believe you will be a full-blown diabetic. Um, my weight was never something that bothered me, but when she used that word, I was like, you're basically telling me that I just signed my own death certificate, basically. Because to me, diabetes cuts your life by years. And I didn't want that. I was like, I deserve to live this full life this life where I'm not constantly pricking myself to check my blood sugar levels, this life where I can go out and eat with my friends and not be worried about my sugar spiking or me passing out because my sugar is low. And that's what really drove me. I went to this gym. At my, the, the nearest mall in my house was opening up a gym. I signed up before the gym opened. Like they were still building the gym when I signed up. That's how determined I was to like get rid of this D word that she used. I was like, I don't want to be defined by diabetes. So she put me on metformin. 
and I used the metformin while I was working out. And I was losing the weight. I lost about 60 pounds in like seven months. I thought it was because I was working out, but come to find out the reason I lost all that weight is because the metformin made me so nauseous, I refused to eat. So I was basically starving myself. And I lost the weight, but the problem with me losing weight from starving, I had a bobblehead. My head was still huge and my body was tiny. And my mom was like, you know what? This is enough. Like, you've lost enough weight. Stop. And I was like, Ma, I'm not even trying anymore. Like, this isn't me. So I took myself off of the metformin because I was like, I just can't. I felt miserable. I was weak. I was skipping class. I was sleeping in class. It just was not working. I felt like it treated the weight, but it didn't treat the symptoms that came with my PCOS um, because I was depressed. I was stressed. I had insomnia. I was sleeping at the oddest hours. Um, and it's something that I don't share with a lot of people unless they come to me and personally ask me. And then I tell them, metformin for me was hell. Like, yes, I was skinny, but who wants to be skinny and miserable? I hated how I looked. Basically, I just ate away all the muscle that I had, and I was just skinny fat, you know? Once I took myself off of it, I gained back 60 plus 6 pounds, so 66 pounds. I was pushing 300 pounds after I took myself off of the medication. And that's when I realized medicine is not the answer. It is not the answer. My mom was like, how is it that you gained all the weight back plus more? And I had no answer for her. I could not tell her why. You didn't change anything. You just went off the medication. I just took myself off of it. I was still eating a regular diet. Um, I was still exercising religiously. I literally just stopped taking those horse pills because at one point I was taking 2,000 milligrams a day. And if anybody knows anything about metformin, that is a lot. And I wasn't diabetic. So um, the weight just came back and it came back quick. Like it didn't slowly come back. It's like I blew up. It's like I blinked and I was big again. And it was the most disheartening thing. Like, I was so sad. I hated how I looked. Um, I hated how I felt. But I was still working out because I was like, you know what? Something has to give. And nothing really worked. So I told my doctor, can I get back on metformin? And she said, yeah, we can put you back on it. We can increase your dose. When she said increase my dosage, I told her, you know what? Never mind. If I'm taking 2,000 milligrams a day, if you want to increase it, that means we're going up 500. That means you want me taking 3,000 milligrams a day. That is, this, it's crazy to me that anyone can take 3,000 milligrams of metformin a day and be okay with it. I was not diabetic. So to me, it's just like you're treating me as though I'm a, I'm a diabetic who does not know how to manage their diabetes. Yeah. And at that point, did you know how? Like, were you research, Were you kind of figuring out what to eat, how to eat? Yeah. So I, was, I looked up everything for PCOS. For PCOS, it was basically saying we should not be eating a lot of sugar no processed food, no junk food. We should eat slow digesting carbs. And I literally, I was eating sweet potatoes, spinach, and baked fish almost every single day. Like my coworkers would tell you, I had the most bland food and it still was not working. So I was like, you know what? My body doesn't like carbs. That's when it hit me. I was like, there's some people out there who just don't know how to break down carbs. And that's probably what it is. If someone can be allergic to gluten, you're allergic to carbs. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I told myself, like, you're allergic to carbs. Carbs do not like you, and you don't like them. And that's when I slowly started reducing my carbs. And when I went low carb, I saw some changes. So then I started doing research for keto. And the first video I saw was yours. It was like a day in a, a day of eating and intermediate fasting. I was like, oh, maybe you should try keto. So I watched the videos. I literally watched your videos, like, all day. Oh, I did thanks. Some research <laughs> about how fat and hormones work, and that's when it kind of clicked. So I was like, fat hormones transport balance. Yeah. You need to balance your hormones. And in order to do that, you need to feed your body this fat. So I just went full-blown keto. Oh my gosh. How <laughs> cool is it? Like the massive story behind this is you were like, I'm not taking your answer. I'm going to find my own answer and I'm going to I'm gonna be an advocate for my own health. Yeah. My doctor was so pissed when I told her I took myself off of the medication. She said, who told you you could do that? I said, seeing how we're treating my body, I gave myself permission. I come to you and I pay you this copay to see me, not to tell me what I cannot and cannot, what I can and cannot do. I do respect your opinion, but at this point, this is my health. Yeah. Um, and she wasn't happy. She was like, come back to me when you lose the weight naturally. I was like, I'm not going to come back at all. How about that? <laughs> okay. Good for you. So Good for she you. hasn't seen me since then. And I don't think I'll ever go back. And so what is your relationship to weight now? You've gone up, you've gone down. I kind of just ditched the whole idea of weight. 
um, I realized that I think I'm just going to be a big woman for the rest of my life. I'm 5'9", like 235 pounds, and I look good, and I feel good, and my body does amazing things at this weight. My body fat is at 29%. Some days you can see my abs, some days you can't. For so long, I focused on weighing this certain number because my doctor told me that if my BMI is above a certain number, I'm not healthy. But to me, it's just like, that's not okay because you're telling me to obsess about this number on the scale. And it became so obsessive that I was weighing everything. I went to the restaurant with my friends and I was like, wait, I have to get on my fitness pal and enter in these foods because I have to know that I'm not going to make my weight go up. It's not too much sodium. I was weighing everything. Like I ate a gumbo and I plugged in my gumbo. I was like one gumbo. And my best friend was like, are you serious? And it kind of hit me. I was like, you're logging in a gumbo? What, what kind of life are you living? Like you have to log in a treat. So I was like, you know what? With having PCOS, my weight fluctuates so much. Like I could sneeze and it gained five pounds. So I was like, you know what? Just let go of this whole idea of weighing less than 200 pounds, of uh, fitting into what society says is healthy. Because healthy is not a number. It's how you feel. Healthy is how you see yourself. And to be quite honest, I've never been happier with myself until now. And I still don't fit this society definition of healthy. I fit my definition of healthy. Mm, mm, yes, totally. And so speaking of society, before we started recording, we were talking about how haters going to hate and how people just don't like, they just have too much time on their hands. And I love, I love your judge, your mother aspect. Like that is just, that's so brilliant because you're right. If you think back to what your mom taught you, I, I can almost guarantee that it wasn't hate on everyone, waste your time and have people, you, you know, like be so mean to people that they can lose their jobs and, and their lives. Like, yeah. Like, it's we, crazy. The thing about it is we don't know a lot of the battles that people are going through. But yes. we tend to just look at people and like, you know what? Oh, you're confident. You're strong. Don't allow this to fool you. I have the days that I wake up and I feel like crap. The days that I look at myself and I don't see this person who is just amazing, this person who is big and bold, this person who is full of life. Because some days you don't, you just don't, it's not there. So it's just like, it could be that day that you hit me and it just breaks me even further. And it's just like, before you let something come out of your mouth, think, how is this going to affect this person? How is it really going to like, how are they going to digest these words that I'm going to use it, like throw at them? And people don't get that. People think it's because it's social media that it doesn't resonate that deeply, that it doesn't really like affect you, but it really does. Like, how is it that I put out this content and instead of you guys enjoying it, you guys choose to break me and attack me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's how I see it. It's just like, before you can like break me, judge your mom. I love it. I totally yeah. love it. I hope you're totally digging this episode. I love putting these together every week and I hope you're getting something out of it. I love seeing where you're listening from. So next time you're listening or even right now, take a picture of yourself watching the show or a screenshot of your favorite episode and tag me on Instagram at healthful pursuit. And if social isn't your thing, that's totally fine. Just jump on your favorite podcast player and leave a review for the show. Okay, back to the good stuff. So we've chatted about um, problems in keto with the products, problems on social media. Um, how do you feel about also, because we're chatting about social media, like people idolizing other people on social and like not seeing the full story because that, that happens with everybody. Like we always take pictures of the happy moments. Exactly. Um, and a lot of people come on my page and they tell me the reason I like you is because you keep it real. And that's, that's it. There was one point where for a whole month, I did not get out of bed. And I recorded that. I woke up and I put it on Instagram and I said, you guys want to know the reality of my life? I suffer from depression and I still suffer from it. This is what life looks like for me. I am in my bed, in the dark, and in my house. I did not go to the gym. I barely ate. All I did was sleep. And it's the reality. I woke up and I lost 10 pounds. But it's not because I did anything to lose the weight. It's because I wasn't feeding my body. People refuse to like see the real. People don't like it when you keep it 100. And I've told people, it's either you accept what I'm giving you 100% or you unfollow me. Because there's nothing I can tell you that will help you more than how I see life and how I deal with life. I'm not 100% keto. 
some days I slip up and eat a whole tray of Oreos. And it's just, it's being human. We are human and we are so imperfect. And I wish everyone would realize that being these imperfect creatures is beautiful. Because if I could wake up today, eat a hundred Oreo cookies and still be fabulous and still have abs and still see my muscles. I mean, I may wake up and be bloated, but who cares? I still look great. You know, it's just like as human beings, we have to accept our flaws. We have to accept failure. We have to accept the fact that every day will not be perfect. You might go through a whole week of just feeling like crap and then a whole month of just feeling on top of the world. And we have to be willing to accept it. And we have to be willing to accept that in others. If you can accept your flaw, you have to be willing to accept someone else's flaw. And if someone is posting all of your best pictures on Instagram, be able to see that, decipher that. I'm that one person who will take a video and be like, <laughs> no, 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 you're sucking in. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> if you were to breathe right now, those would disappear. You're sucking in. And that makes me feel better. And as bad as that sounds, it makes me feel better because I'm just like, you're human. You suck in to look your best, so let me suck in, you know? So I just wish people would allow yourself to see other people's flaws, but not in a negative way, in a human way. Because if we can see that other people are not perfect, I feel like it allows us, allow us to accept ourselves more. Um, when we idolize people, it tends to it make us feel like, oh, I can't achieve that. I can't be like them. Why not? What is it that they have that you don't have? Some people's bank accounts are bigger than mine, but that does not mean a thing. Give me time. I can, if, if you have these pair of shoes and I can't afford them, I promise you I can find another pair of shoes that look just as good. That's how and life for is like 20, 20% less or whatever. Exactly. That's what life is to me. It's just like, oh, you have the iPhone X. I have the 6 Plus and it does amazing things because guess what? I can take a picture, use an app and make my picture just as crisp as your iPhone X and life goes on. You know, it's just like you have to be willing to just see the flaw in people and accept it and then accept yours as well. You know, it just makes life so much better. And that's, I think that's what makes me happier these days is I don't see people as perfect and I don't use your perfection to judge myself anymore. That's such an interesting perspective. I've, I've never looked at it that way. How I look at it is like seeing every individual as like a very unique person and that we all are just like, I mean, we're so different and we're all these little humans that are all different. And that just blows my mind to even think about that this is even possible. Like it's seeing someone's talent and you're just like, how is it that you are just so talented like that? Like it's mind blowing. Like it's not even I'm jealous. I'm just like in awe of you. I mean, I have my talents, but gosh, you are amazing, you know? And that's what is so interesting about human beings to me. Yeah. I totally agree. So can we chat a little bit about non-scale victories? Because you're feeling like I'm so much more than a body and my weight doesn't define me. How do you define your own health or your goals by not looking at the scale? Um, so I feel like the biggest thing was probably waking up and accepting the, the picture that I see of myself. Um, I had this thing where it's just like, you're not always going to like what you see in the mirror, but it's not okay to put yourself down. Um, there are mornings when I wake up and I'm just like, oh, these love handles are still not gone. But then, you know, you put on this dress and you're just like, oh my goodness, who was that? Like, I idolize myself. I love who I am. And that is due to me taking on this different lifestyle. I honestly believe how you eat and what you do for your body will affect how you see yourself. It's not, a, it's not something that you can see off of the scale. It's waking up and accepting the fact that this body, as it is, you have to accept it. You have to live in this body. It's not going to take your husband, your children, your best friend, society to tell you that your body is great. The non-scale victories that I always tell people, if you can wake up in the morning and truly accept how you look and who you are and how you feel, that is the biggest thing in life. Because it's at that moment that you can tackle anything. You can get out there and people can talk a whole bunch of crap about you and it won't mean a damn thing because all that matters is who you see and how you feel about yourself. Years ago, I would not leave my house without makeup. It could be 120 degrees outside and I promise you, I would have a full face on. Why? Because I hated how I looked without makeup. And the best word to use is hate. I really hated how I looked. And today, I will leave my house without makeup. I will flirt with the cutest guy in the gym on the train, in the restaurant, just as I am. 
because I worked on myself. I told myself in order to really enjoy life, you have to accept yourself at every moment, every shape, every period, every size, every weight. I I've chose to love myself. And I think that's what it is. It's, it's self-love. Self-love, you can't find that on the scale. You cannot. Because today you could be 10 pounds lighter and tomorrow you could be 10 pounds heavier. But are you still going to love yourself? So. You know, it's interesting. I was reading a paper the other day that said the average woman, um, will ch- her weight will fluctuate by 20 to 30 pounds a month, depending on their hormones. I feel amazing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> 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 me too. Like I will go up and down about 15 pounds in my cycle. I like exactly. That's it. People are just like, how do you get so bloated? Good question. Let's go in and talk to my hormones. I don't know. I put on a good 15 pounds of water. It's water weight and something else because I just don't know. And it shows and it's just like, okay, I look pregnant this month. Let me just wear something baggy and I'll be okay. I really don't care. <laughs> like it's part of life. I'm going to have to grow through this to like go on menopause. So my answer is enjoy it. Yeah, I totally agree. So I need to ask you, what is your favorite keto thing to eat right now? Like, what are you just like dying over? Let me see. So I make these quesadillas. Oh my God. Just thinking about it is making my mouth water. <laughs> I, I make these quesadillas with brown sausage, brown beef, eggs, and cheese. And I have it with a side of guacamole, sour cream, and salsa. And it's so good to me. I use the mission, um, mission tortillas, the ones that are like six or nine net carbs. And I just, I use two of those to make it like just, oh, my mouth is watering. Me too. And I don't even eat cheese or anything, but I, I need one of those in my life. <laughs> it's just so good. It's just so simple. I make the um, sausage, the ground sausage, I fry the eggs and I just put everything separately. And then I oil the pan, put one tortilla, add the cheese, and then slowly layer it. And then put the oil the tortilla, cover it and let the bottom crisp up, flip it, let the other side crisp up, and then just cut it into fours. I can't finish it, but it's so good. (laughs) Dang, that sounds really good. I can never finish it. Like, it's not keto treats that really get me, but I love flavor. I'm African and everything we eat has to have flavor. So if you give me food that is full of flavor, you're basically feeding me life because life is like flavorful. I can't eat bland food. So if something is like just super juicy, I eat, I don't talk when I eat. It's just, I just be like, mm, you know, if I give you these. <laughs> just, <laughs> no, it's good. I'm not talking right now, <laughs> which is you know? so crazy because I'm German and I love bland food. Like really, just, yes, just meat with sauerkraut, salt, and I'm good. Like, I don't need spices. I don't need crazy. Oh my goodness. No, no. <laughs> I have this thing on my page where I'm just like, if your food uses less than two seasonings, I don't want it. And people laugh at me. And I'm just like, you guys, it's not <laughs> you. It's me. Like, I need you to put everything in there. Okay. I need my curry to be like 90 degrees hot. I need all the peppers. I need all the paprika. I need all everything. Give everything. it to me. Oh, yeah, everything. <laughs> so cool. Another way that we're totally different. And that's amazing. Um, so what do you think is missing in the keto space right now for women? Honestly? Yeah. Honestly, is missing. There are people who can get on keto today and lose 20 pounds tomorrow. I'm not one of those people. And a lot of people are dishonest about that. I feel like when people start keto they're, and they're successful, they grow this following. Having a bunch of followers is great. But when you have that much, you have to be willing to tell people that don't expect what I have to be the same thing for you. Just because someone can start keto today in a month and in a month they drop 20 pounds doesn't mean that you can start keto today and drop 20 pounds. It may not happen in a month. It may not happen in three months. And it's just that honesty that I feel like we really, really need. People are fed these products that don't work. People are told to wake up and drink bulletproof coffee for more energy and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, don't believe the hype. Do your own research. If, some, if you feel in your heart that someone is not being honest with you, do your research. And I've always told you, there are only a handful of people who know about keto that I'm willing to listen to. And I listed you as one of them because you know your and that's the simplest way to put it. It's not that you're selling us an ebook. It's not that you're selling us products. It's that you've done the research for us and you're feeding us what you really know. And you have all the citations and references. 
And that's what it is for me. If someone cannot tell you where they got something, they're lying to you. <laughs> that's, that's great. That's, 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 yeah. that's literally it. I have these rants that I do and everyone's like, when is the next rant? I'm like, no one has annoyed me yet. I'm still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so when someone annoys me, I promise you, I'll tell you. Like, I just wish I, the number one thing we just need is honesty. If someone, if people can be honest, it'll work. There are a lot of women who are using PCOS as a crutch. They weigh, say they woke up today and they're 20 pounds heavier. They'll say, you know what, I think I have PCOS. Do you think you have it or have you been diagnosed with it? Those are two different things. Just because you're putting on weight does not mean you have PCOS. Just because you might have a few chin hairs doesn't mean you have PCOS. So it's just like that honesty to me would help all of us, especially women, because we tend to like not give ourselves credit for anything. We're so hard on ourselves. So it's just like, if you can help me by being honest, Maybe I'll take it easy on myself. Maybe I'll accept my journey for what it is. I'll accept the fact that it's going to take me more than a year to lose these 20 pounds. It's going to take me more than a year to finally get down to my goal weight if weight is your issue, you know? Mm -hmm. Just be honest. Let's keep it 100. Yeah, and with honesty requires vulnerability. And I think we're told, like, vulnerable is not the place to be. Like, it's scary. Especially on social media. It is. It's very scary. And then a lot of people, the thing is, they'll slip up and not want to tell you that they slipped up. People will have carb ups that aren't carb ups. They just happen to pop a few pop tarts in their yeah. mouth for breakfast, but they won't tell you that. There are people who's like, my full day of eating keto. But did you show us the few Snicker bars that you had for snacks? <laughs> no, but you talking about your food. No, keep it 100 with me. Show me your weaknesses. Show me that you slip up. What are your flaws? Because if I see your flaws, it may help me tremendously. It may help me accept my own. There's no one who's done keto without cheating. No, I really It happens. No. <laughs> it happens. And it's so okay. Um, and a lot of people don't give themselves that because we don't, a lot of people don't share that. Yeah. And I feel like that's where we fall short in the keto community and on Instagram or social media in general. Cool. Amazing. And where can people find you? You've mentioned your Instagram a couple of times. I What's up? I am breaking up with obesity, the one and only. There are a couple of people out there trying to use that name, but it's me. I have always <laughs> been this person. I will forever be this person. Um, you can find me on Instagram and on Facebook under the same handle. I even have a YouTube. Don't mind that I haven't updated since February. My phone is broken. But breaking up with obesity is my baby. And it's not breaking up with obesity on a scale. It's breaking up with the word obesity because society has decided that if we weigh a certain number, we are obese. And that's not the case. I am breaking up with obesity based on society's rules and protocols and beliefs. Oh, that is beautiful. I'm glad you <laughs> described that because I didn't fully know what your what that name meant until you said that. I'm like, yes. I love that. Yeah, a lot so- of people thought when I came up with it, it was based on like this number on the scale. And it's just like, no, I left that go a long time ago. Um, I remember when I got to my lowest weight, my doctor was like, you're still obese. And I was like, but my body said, he was like, no, you're still obese. Based on your BMI, your abilities. And I was just like, okay, Ugh. that's fine. That's what you believe. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, Phoebe, thank you so much for coming thank on the you. show. This was a blast. <laughs> thank you for having me. This is awesome. Thanks for listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. Join us again next Sunday to discover more Keto for Women secrets for your fat-fueled life. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, recipes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be confused as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcasts reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.